NDAA, National Defense Authorization Act, that Obama has called for and signed, stipulates that even American citizens can now be uh, targeted by the military, picked yes, up, and a prison team. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? That you are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage, born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. This denotes ownership. And when your parents were tricked into filling this out, they allowed your spirit and your soul to be monetized and futures were sold on you. Now, this is my birth certificate. This is actually a share. See this red number? This A, I'm born in Canada. This is a class A share. Now, this is called a CUSIP number. And all securities require a CUSIP number. And that's what this is. And you are held as collateral to secure the debt which our government owes to international bankers. So you and me and all these people here are actually collateral. And we don't even own our lives. We are chattel. And we believe we're free. I made an application to the Registrar General and I got my original social insurance application. Now before they sent it to me, they put a little piece of paper over this before they photocopied it. Because my friend has his and they didn't block this out. And when you hold it up, you see Bank of Canada. It is said that the best slaves are the ones who don't know that they're enslaved. And we all have invisible chains on us and we don't know it. Let me out! Now, I know this sounds a bit far-fetched to you guys as being owned uh, through our birth certificate, but if you just pay attention, I'm going to uh, clarify some things for you. Now, the, we all seen that the birth certificate looks like a stock bond. It looks like a car title, certificate of ownership. Uh, what these guys are trying to tell us is that this stuff that we're being bought and sold on the stock market, uh, and he is owned by the Bank of Canada. Now, I did my research a few years back on this topic. Uh, it's uh, pretty much the debt slave thingy. Uh, I you put in my account number to make a payment for my uh, one of my credit cards, and it actually took my social security number uh, as payment for one of my credit cards. Now the payment didn't go through, but mind you, it, it came back three to five days later to de de decline. Uh, but if it wasn't an account number, it would have been declined right away. And not only that, uh, my social security number was tied to the Bank of Atlanta, Georgia. 
So uh, that's some stuff we got to think about. I mean, it may, be, it may sound a bit far-fetched uh, because it's, it's just a birth certificate in our eyes, but that certificate does look like a certificate of ownership. And I think we are all enslaved uh, through that birth certificate. And mind you, it was brought in in 1933. Just look at the years, those numbers that they used. 1933 is when uh, we pretty much became slaves uh, through the birth certificate and stuff along those lines. <clears throat> Now, uh, I'm going to take it to uh, Virginia. I don't know if you guys remember back in Virginia where they were trying to ban the guns in that state. And uh, the, the cops stood with the people, the National Guard stood with the people, and then the politicians in that state that won. Uh, obviously, they cheated to win that election to get power over Virginia anyways, but they lost that... Uh, <clears throat> that little bills, all those bills they're trying to pass to take the guns from the American people because uh, the cops and everybody stood with them, right? Now, we're here today and... Uh, <laughs> they're trying to defund the cops. So why would they be trying to defund the cops? Obviously, they're going to be trying to defund the cops because they don't want the cops uh, in their way when this stuff goes down. You know, cops have too much power, and they know this. They put in these movies that the federal government and these FBI agents have more uh, jurisdiction in the counties, but no, they don't. The sheriffs do. Uh, so let's not uh, let's just keep that in mind. If we defund our cops, then they're definitely going to run all over us. And we can see what's being done with Black Lives Matter and Antifa and all these guys. Uh, this is the same thing that was going on over in Germany. A lot of people may not recognize this, but the brown shirts were out there doing the same thing, uh, destroying uh, monuments and history and culture, uh, burning the inner cities, trying to get rid of the police, doing campaign smears and stuff like that. They uh, hate on the other party. That's the same thing the Democratic Party is doing to the Republican Party within the United States. They're just try try trying to create division so they can get what they want ultimately in the end. And uh, I got a guy named Yuri. Uh, he's a, a Russian defector from Russia back during the Soviet Union who pretty much talks about the stages that they do to take down nations. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put him up and let him talk so you can get a better understanding of what's coming. And what's being done right now today is, is what's been done in a multitude of other countries before they've taken them down and uh, brought in a new source of power. Uh, and he tells us exactly what we need to do to prevent this. And he tells us exactly what's coming. Uh, so pay attention to this guy's every word and watch this clip all the way to the end. Slow and it's divided in, in four basic stages. Uh, the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that many years? Because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students in the country of, of, of your enemy, exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. The demoralization process in the United States is basically completed already. Uh, for the last 25 years, actually it's overfulfilled because uh, demoralization now reaches such areas where previously not even Comrade Andropov and, and all his experts would would even dream of such a tremendous success most of it is done by americans to americans thanks to lack of moral standards as i mentioned before uh, exposure to true information does not matter anymore a person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information the facts tell nothing to him uh, even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and show him concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it. You understand, most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system, that they will fight to protect it. Until he, he is going to receive a kick in, the, in his fat bottom, when a military boot crashes his balls, then he will understand, but not before that. That's the tragic of the situation of demoralization. The next stage is destabilization. This time, subverter does not care about your ideas and the patterns of your consumption. Whether you eat junk food and get fat and flabby, it doesn't matter anymore. This time, and it takes only from two to five years to destabilize a nation, uh, it's, what, what matters is essentials, economy, foreign relations, defense systems. Uh, and you can see it quite clearly that in some areas, uh, in such sensitive areas as, as uh, defense and economy, uh, the uh, influence of Marxist-Leninist ideas in the United States is absolutely fantastic. I, I could never believe it 14 years ago when I landed uh, in this part of the world that 
the process will go that fast. Uh, the next stage, of course, is crisis. It, it, it may take only up to six weeks to, to bring a country to the verge of crisis. You can see it in, in Central America now. And after crisis, with a violent change of, of power, structure and economy, you have so-called the period of normalization. It may when we get out of the sort of new normal and get to a new, new normal... Just trying to cope with the new normal. This is the new normal imagining or reimagining what society is going to look like when they reopen. If you want to go to a restaurant, you're going to have your temperature taken before you're allowed inside uh, to dine. So that's just uh, possibly going to be the new normal that we see down the road. Adjust our lives and get ready for the new normal. This new normal is going to look very, very different. A stepwise return to not normal, but a new normal. The new normal. The communities return to normal or the new normal on what that may be. May last indefinitely. Normalization is a cynical expression borrowed from Soviet propaganda. When the Soviet tanks moved into Czechoslovakia in 68, Comrade Brezhnev said, now the situation in brotherly Czechoslovakia is normalized. This is what will happen in the United States if you allow all these schmucks to bring the country to crisis, to promise people all kinds of goodies and the paradise on earth. Uh, to, to destabilize your uh, economy, to eliminate the principle of free market competition, and to put a big brother government in Washington, D.C., with the benevolent dictators like Walter Mondale, who will promise lots of things, never mind whether the promises are fulfillable or not. Your leftists in, in the United States, all these professors and all these beautiful civil rights defenders, they are instrumental in the process of the, of the uh, uh, subversion only to destabilize the nation. When their job is completed, they are, non, they are not needed anymore. They know too much. Some of them, when, when they get disillusioned, when they see that Marxist-Lenin has come to power, they, obviously they get offended. They think that they will come to power. That will never happen, of course. They will be lined up against the wall and shot. But they may turn into the most bitter enemies of Marxist-Leninists when they come to power. And that's what happened in Nicaragua. You remember most of these uh, former Marxist-Leninists were either put to prison or one of them split and now he's working against Sandinistas. It happened in, in uh, uh, Grenada when Maurice Bishop was, he was already a Marxist. He was executed by, by a new Marxist who was more Marxist than this Marxist. Same happened in Afghanistan when uh, first there was Taraki, he was killed by Amin, then Amin was killed by Babrak Karman with the help of KGB. Same happened in, in Bangladesh when Mujibur Rahman, very pro-Soviet leftist, was assassinated by his own Marxist-Leninist military comrades. It's the same pattern everywhere. The, the time bomb is ticking with every second. Now, you see what Yuri's talking about toward the end of the video where he says that they're going to be uh, exterminating people who helped him uh, take down nations and stuff like that because they, uh, they know too much. Now, Abraham Finkelstein was saying the same thing, that they were going to exterminate people who helped take down their own nation because they have no use for those who betrayed their own. So it's pretty much the same concept. Uh, all this stuff's always been done. He said it here in the video and he talked about the, narr the narrative and the new norm. Uh, we're in that new norm stage now. You hear them talking about that on the news every single day. Yuri was saying the same thing. So this guy knows what he's talking about. He's a Russian KGB defector and uh, he's lived he lived, he's lived this and he's actually you know done all the stuff that we're talking about and uh, he's seen it done to other nations in the past. A multitude. He named them all out for you there. Now we did hear recently that Trump said he wasn't going to we we're going to be seeing him for a while. Uh, that makes sense in my opinion because when he put us under the state of emergency uh, that pretty much gave FEMA uh, sole authority over the nation through a whole bunch of executive orders and stuff along those lines and six months uh, is what it's going to take for uh, Congress to take a look at those books and then see if we can put our president back into power and stuff along those lines which they would hopefully but uh this i think he gave up uh, he did the state of emergency somewhere in march like 13th or 15th so september is next month uh that's when he supposedly gets the power of the country back at the congress checks the books 13th and the 15th of september somewhere around there uh but uh why would he be trying to disappear now i know he's saying he has a whole bunch of billionaires and millionaires stuff like that that want to kill him we get that but in my eyes i kind of see as our leaders <clears throat> I don't care if you're a leader of the United States, South America, Russia, or China. I think they're all friends, and I think the enemy is the people. It kind of makes sense that he wants to go underground all of a sudden because he knows there's something bad coming. I mean, 
in my opinion. I'm not trying to be a fear monger or something like that along those lines. Actually, that term should be thrown out the window a long time ago because in my eyes, I think that uh, the virus, the COVID-19 thing, was pretty much uh, a bioweapon over in China. And then they used that psychological warfare here in the United States uh, to get all their pines and everything in a place to... Uh, see if they can get away with doing this stuff to us. Now they know they can do it to us because they see people on the news fighting with masks on them, cussing people out who don't wear masks. We got cops trying to beat up people who don't wear masks. And so uh, I think they have everything they need in order uh, to get with they, that second wave that uh, Bill Gates and everybody keeps talking about in this dark winter that's coming. It sounds like all this stuff's already planned and they already have it laid out for us. It's just up to us, like people like myself, to uh, speak my mind and get it to you guys so you guys can see what's going on from our perspective and not what CNN and Fox got coming at your way because uh, those guys all work for the same team so we are on our same team which is why they are trying to uh, <clears throat> ban our videos on YouTube like I literally uh, apply for monetization I don't really don't care about the money but they took away 10,000 views the minute I applied for monetization I know my views are not going out there I had did a I had a team of guys come in here and uh, do a video count for me and uh, I, every uh, every 10 to 15 views I get one view here on YouTube so that's how they suppress my channel but who cares right I'm gonna keep doing this regardless until uh, they shut YouTube down or the internet uh, I think uh, we the people need to stick together because in, in these moments right now if we don't stand together and stand for something that like our old America and our, well made America great uh, before all these other people got to it and destroyed it and tried to destabilize and kill the economy and stuff along those lines and put us against each other if we can't get that back then it's gonna be gone forever uh, but all that being said, I'd just like to thank you guys for watching today. I love you all like my own, and God bless. But they are the gatekeepers. They are guarding all the doors. They are holding all the keys, which means that sooner or later, someone is going to have to fight them.